Hello there. What is going on everybody? Today we are going to be reviewing the Table of Ultimate Gaming Game Changer 4x6 Table. This is from the Game Changer line, the latest Kickstarter that they had. And this was the table that I actually won thanks to you guys helping me enter to win their table giveaway. So this table was kind of free to me, but I did have to pay a substantial amount because I wanted to upgrade it a little bit. So I want to talk a little bit about this table. This is a four foot by six foot playing surface. So the table is actually bigger than four by six. And it's got, I ordered the dining room conversion kit. So I kind of have these slots that go into the top. So it can be a dining room and it can also be a game table. I got a purple play mat for it. And there's even some more things coming because they break the ships, uh, shipments up into all different sections. So uh, there's a whole lot to look at here, but we're really just focusing on the table itself uh, and uh, how it works as both a dining room table and as a gaming table. Also, I do want to remind you guys, there is still time to enter the latest giveaway for an Amazon gift card for 25 bucks. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Let's take a look at this table. All right, here is the four by six game changer table. It is really, really, really big. And I don't know if I'm able to do it justice by just kind of showing you on camera, but it is massive. Um, like it's it's more than four feet by six feet because the playing surface inside is four by six. Uh, every piece did come stained. Uh, the tabletop covers actually came afterwards. So like a lot of this stuff doesn't all ship in the same exact package, but they all came within a few days of each other. So I didn't have to wait very long. Uh, and it's, as you can see the finish on there, it's, it's actually pretty nice looking, uh, but some things are a little strange. Like, you know, to get them out, there was a little hole, but I thought there was supposed to be some kind of metal clip or something in here to pull it out, but it's just a straight up hole in the wood. So you have a hole in your dining room table. Now the dining room table option was basically one of the main reasons that uh, I was interested in this because I don't have a game room. I game in the dining room on the dining room table and I wanted to convert, you know, it had to be a dining room table first and a gaming table second. And as a dining room table, while the wood finish looks very, very pretty, there's a lot of little things like the table covers don't fit exactly. So you have a, little, a lot of little gaps like that. Um, there's some areas here where the wood doesn't come together and you can still see the dowels underneath. And I have tried like heck to get those together, but this is just a, a, like a symptom of a lot of the pieces not being cut very well. Uh, you can see it also right there. Uh, I just feel like the sizing wasn't all there. Um, another one of the issues that I run into is these little caps they give you to cover up a lot of your like your screw holes and stuff don't really stay in. They only kind of stay in if your screw, like you only put it in like halfway. So the screw has to be like flush almost with the surface because the caps are so tiny that they, like if you put it in there, they'll, the rim of the cap will pop itself back out. So most of my screws are, uh, are basically not, uh, not covered with these little cap holes. And then the few that did stay in have been starting to pop out. Um, and so most of my table has all this exposed metal, which is kind of a bummer for, again, before a dining room table. Um, it's, it's kind of a, kind of a shame. I saw the stickers on, you see, we, we you know, it hasn't, uh, I haven't really seen a whole lot of use yet. It's been just freshly put together and, uh, yeah. Um, but the legs seem pretty sturdy. I was a little concerned at how thin the legs were, but when you see that they put them two together and then there's a bottom piece on there as well, uh, it seems to hold it in pretty well. They feel pretty sturdy. It's uh, And it's not even that heavy. I guess birch is kind of a lighter wood because I can pick it up with one hand. Of course, I would need some help. It doesn't feel like it's uh, feels a little flimsy for a well, while you're looking at over six feet of length to try to just pick up one corner at a time. So that's probably not how you want to transport it. But, uh, but yeah, overall pretty good. There is a lot of these little things in the wood 
these little kind of cut patterns, I guess. I don't know a whole lot about wood, but I've seen a couple of things like that, or these oval shapes right here. There's a lot of those, and I don't know if that's a symptom of like there was a knot in the wood when we had to like wood putty it in or something, um, but there's a lot of those. There's another one right there, and they're all over the place uh, on this wood, so I don't really know what that means, if that means the wood is bad or good, but it is what it is. Uh, these actually do come out pretty easily and we can take a look at the gaming surface itself. All right, so I can just pull these out to reveal the surface underneath. And, or if you wanna leave some in there, they actually kind of slide pretty well, but it's just wood on wood, so I wouldn't slide them too much. But we can pull them all out and then take a look at the surface underneath. All right, there we've got it. Just the uh, purple gaming mat surface on the walnut finish. Uh, and this one actually fit almost perfectly. It was just a little bit too long. So in the corners, we can see it kind of kind of bunches up a little bit. I'll show you a little closer. There we go, you can see it. I, I kind of push it down. It's like that in both corners, so it's not something I can push to the middle. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a bummer and that's like, it should have been a little more precise, but I mean, I'm okay with it. I, for now, it's not really gonna, gonna break too much. But uh, yeah, it would have been nicer if it was just, I don't know, man, maybe a centimeter shorter. Would have been a little bit nicer. One of my favorite tabletop games to play is Star Wars Armada, and uh, it uses a six by three playing surface. So that's why I wanted at least six by three, so I want six by four. And as you can see, I can get really, really, really big games going on this table uh, beyond the standard six by three. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and yes, that is Deep Space Nine behind the Empire. But uh, yeah, so this is a monstrously huge surface. And, uh, and of course, I can put regular play mats on top of the neoprene play mat here uh, just for, for like, you know, if I want the Starfield background or whatever, uh, I can definitely do that. So as far as this being a gaming surface, it's pretty darn good. Um, I like the fact that it's a, a, a standard height. My previous table was like bar stool kind of height, so it was much taller. And um, yeah, and, and, and it became kind of, I don't know, it's tiring to sit at a tall table for me for a certain amount of time. Uh, so sitting at a more relaxed height was really, really nice and being able to kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's harder to walk around this whole table now because it's so big, it uses up most of my dining room uh, where I used to have free space in here before I no longer have free space, but it's okay because I have good space here. The, uh, the biggest gripe that I've had, it was in the construction of this thing. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the uh, construction. All right, so let me try and peel this back a little bit. There we go. Um, so we have all these panels underneath and you can see a lot of, well, some sawdust on there and a lot of just like damage and scuff marks and, and things that's, uh, that really shouldn't be there. I'll show you a closer look. Um, there's a lot of breaking on these and this all happened during assembly. Like there's a whole piece of the, uh, of the tabletop right there that is just completely ready to, to break away. Um, and, and that's really, Really, really unfortunate. Um, and this is like this all over. Here's another spot right here. All of this is chipped and stuff. And this, so this, this was on day one of assembly. Uh, and, and, and before I got the, uh, the cover, I was livid. I was really, really mad. Every single one of these did this when trying to assemble it. Um, look, there we go. Yeah, because these were too big. They were way, way too big and trying to push them in is nearly impossible when they're too big because you've got this area in here that you have to slide them into and then push them down and you have to slide them all in there but they were not just too big long ways but also too big wide ways they were completely too big on all four sides 
and, uh, and, and then they, they, they absolutely just could not fit. Um, and so I had to sand them like I was trying to push them in because the, you know, the diagram makes it look like, well, you just push them in and lock them in and they go. So I tried doing that and they weren't fitting and you think, well, maybe they're just tight. Let me push really, really hard. It doesn't work. Um, and because it's just skeleton framework under here, you know, when it doesn't work, they end up falling down through. And so some of the, um, at least this one big crack, I think, uh, no, some of the ones underneath, because I flipped them up, or no, I didn't flip them upside down, but on the bottom side, underneath, um, some of them cracked really bad. I'm gonna go underneath here. And uh, this one right there, that one cracked open really good during, like when you're trying to assemble it, and if it doesn't all go in perfectly, you have just these underneath, uh, you know, and all this rest of this is empty space. So if before it's locked in, you know, you have to push them all together because they kind of hold each other in. And uh, yeah, so assembling these panels was really, really difficult. And I ended up having to sand every single one of them. Uh, and I don't have a belt sander, so I had to use a hand sander. And there's still sand, there's still dust all over them from, from trying to do that to get them to fit. I had to sand these things for two days two days of sanding. Um, granted, if I had a belt sander, then maybe it wouldn't have been so bad, but I don't. So, uh, you know, what are you gonna do, you know? But yeah, this was this was a nightmare. When I was putting these together, I was ready to uh, cry or scream or cursing a lot. And so so I finally got them in, and mostly, like this, this one right here isn't even flush. So I've got like a, a millimeter kind of rise in my table, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to take a hammer to it because it's going to just break some more. I did have to use a towel and, and try to, you know, tap over to get everything to lay down because they, some of it still didn't want to lay down, but it should have never been like completely incorrectly sized. I don't like, and it's like almost the same way that the, 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 the purple cover was a little too big, but at least in that case, it's not gonna break anything, you know? Um, now, once the purple cover came in, it hides all of that, but I hate having a brand new, uh, you know, thousand-ish, thousand plus dollar table that already looks like a 20-year-old table because of all the damage done to, to the material on top. You know, I can cover it up, sure, but, you know, that's, that's really unfortunate. So all in all, I mean, it still is going to look good for gaming. It's still going to look nice and feel nice for gaming. And I think that's one of the most important things for a gaming table. But my biggest problem with this one was definitely assembly. And then the second biggest problem is that for a dining room table, it seems to fall short with a lot of the little cracks and crevices and, and uh, things that I'm not super thrilled with. And again, with the dining room covers, um, I have this one upside down, but the, uh, these table slats here aren't exactly flat either. As you can see, um, they're not exactly flush. So I have to like flip this one over. Um, and like if I push it, it becomes flush with the other ones, but it's not gonna stay that way. So that's another problem too, is that it's not totally flat. Um, the rest of them are, or at least, kind of are pretty close to it this one's a little you know there but they're all kind of bowed just a little bit just a little bit but this one is the bowed the most right there in the middle so my final thoughts for this table is basically it works good as a gaming table and it really falls short as a dining room table and that was kind of disappointing to me because that's really why I was going for this particular type of table because I needed a dining room table first that could also double as a game table second uh, because my family is going to use it a lot more than I am because, well, we're going to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner on it every day. Uh, so that's really my, my biggest gripe there is that I wanted the dining room table functionality to, you know, be up there as far as quality and there's just so many little gaps and imprecise uh, pieces that don't exactly fit together just right that it was really frustrating during the assembly was an absolute nightmare for me uh, you know I 
I was tempted to just start making a, a video in the middle of assembly uh, that would have been filled with profanity, uh, and 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 I did not. So I exercised a little bit of better judgment in that case. But uh, every single one of those panels was much much too large to fit. And uh, granted, I could have probably requested a replacement, uh, but. At the same time, this is a dining room table. I had already removed my other dining room table, and it was gone. It was with family, so I could have gotten it back if I needed to, but I had to make room. You can't fit two giant dining room tables in one room. So I'd already gotten rid of the other dining room table, and I'm assembling this one, and I can't wait another six months for replacement pieces to get here. Um, or, how, you know, it, it, it took almost a year for this to get here. So, so like, you know, my family was eating in the living room floor, you know, like picnic style, uh, you know, that, that next morning because I couldn't assemble it in time. So that's really, you know, like the assembly was an absolute nightmare. The instructions were also difficult to follow. There are a lot of uh, diagrams that were like zoomed out so far you couldn't really see. And in, in specific cases where like a two by four is supposed to go into another uh, two by four, or maybe not two by four, but a plank, a rectangular plank is supposed to go into another rectangular plank. But a rectangle can go multiple different ways. You, it can go this way or flip it over this way. Or you might have to flip it over this way and then flip it over this. You know, there's four different ways it can go. And it wasn't always clear which way you had to go. And so there were multiple times where I had, I had stuff put in and it was wrong. And I had to, uh, you know, unscrew everything and reassemble. So I feel like the instructions could have also been a little bit more clear. But the, the biggest problem by far is, is those panels. Now, I did contact Table of Ultimate Gaming, uh, gaming over this uh, on uh, social media over a couple of different... Um, avenues even uh, even messaged them uh, on on Twitter or tagged them in a post uh, kind of complaining about this I wanted to before I published a review I wanted to give them an, an opportunity to at least you know know about this problem and you know to see if they would try to rectify it but as of now I have not heard anything back from them so I don't know if uh, if they're going to reach out or not but uh, if you guys are watching this, I, I, you know, I would love an opportunity for you guys to make this right, and I would definitely come back and uh, and talk about that as well because it just really stinks having an expensive. Uh, like I think this was, this is a six hundred dollar table if you just get it with no accessories, but with the tabletop covers and the play mat, and in you you have to pay for every single accessory you get, uh, and cup holders, and uh, you know, I, I think it was about thirteen. $1,300 including shipping or something like that. So I had to pay, I think about an extra four or $500 out of pocket. Now for what I've paid, I'm all right with having subpar quality because I got, I got the table almost for free. So it's hard for me to complain about something that was free, but it wouldn't be fair for me to review this table and say, oh, well this table is pretty good when everybody else out there paid full price for theirs and are getting a really substandard table. Uh, I'm assuming because there were so many inconsistencies with my pieces, I don't know if everybody else's tables are, you know, have various different, um, you know, bits that don't fit or maybe the other people's tables do fit. I, I have seen uh, some people complaining about their uh, playmat was way too short or, or other people saying that their table was fine. So. Uh, that makes me think that there's a little bit of a lack of quality control uh, where all of these pa uh, pieces of wood are being manufactured because they just didn't all fit right. And that was really the biggest problem here. I feel like, you know, I've put a lot of furniture together, uh, Ikea type furniture, you know, everything from bookshelves to dressers to just about everything. And, and you know, I know what I'm doing for the most part. Uh, although I'm, I mean, I'm not a carpenter, but I, I, you shouldn't have to be. But I mean, I'm, I'm quite experienced in assembling furniture, and this was definitely the most difficult assembly I have ever had to do. Um, granted, the labeling of all the pieces was done well, uh, you know, and it's. I don't want to give the whole table a completely bad review just because assembling it was an absolute nightmare, and that it really was was an F minus uh, for that. But other aspects of the table are cool. It's huge for example, and, and I like that. I like that it's really, really, really big. Like the pictures don't even do it justice. When you see a board game that's a big board game and you're playing it on there and you've got so much extra room, you're like, oh my gosh, pictures don't do it justice. It's absolutely huge. It's the biggest gaming table I've ever seen. So that's cool. And I like that and I love having a big old gaming table. Uh, you know, But uh, at the same time, I've got little gaps where you can see the wooden dowels through this table and 
you know, I'm going to have people over to have dinner. And like, I can just imagine Thanksgiving and, and then all the family and relatives. I'm like, oh, this is your new table. Oh, I can see right through it. You should get your money back. You know, I'm going to, I'm, I know I'm going to get an earful at Thanksgiving. Right. So, so like that's, you know, I feel like it, they could have done a better job and I hope they step up the quality. I, I probably would not recommend uh, buying a, a table from Table of Ultimate Gaming just because of the this this craftsmanship, you know, the the imprecise cuts of of the wood uh, and the lack of communication. I mean, I didn't get a single email from them for the entire process uh, that the the Kickstarter was down. Um, they actually kicked me out of their Kickstarter, which was weird, and I don't know why. I hadn't um, made any negative comments. I don't usually, you know, act um, negative. And, and uh, you know, they, they kicked me out, so I can't even comment and interact with people on the Kickstarter page that references this. And uh, But I will sometimes go there and, and read other people's comments, and there are a lot of... Uh, a lot of happy customers and a lot of angry customers and people a lot of people had the same problem I had with the panels so I've seen that there's a lot of inconsistencies between the pieces which is just it's just very bizarre to me so um, I feel like when you buy a table from these guys you're kind of rolling the dice on if you're gonna get a table that goes together correctly or not and that's and that's a problem uh, I feel like you know you, that's really the biggest problem here uh, Look, I love the playmat. The playmat's purple. The wood looks really pretty. The, you know, the walnut stained stuff is really, really pretty. It looks gorgeous uh, from a distance. And, uh, and, and it's going to be really, really fun to play games on. So I, I love that aspect of it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it for a long time, for as long as I can. Hopefully it lasts me for years and years and years. Uh, so I'm going to keep using it. And I want to thank you guys all for, for helping me win it, because otherwise it would have been a lot more expensive. And my, my last table wasn't big enough to play the really big games. I, I, could, I had to pull out a, a special piece of plywood to be able to play games like Legion and Armada, or anything that requires a 6x3 surface. So now I won't have to do that anymore, and that's awesome. It'll make it easier to try to get more battle reports and, and big big games and, uh, and, and do stuff like that. Like Twilight Imperium I can totally do here now. That's, that's going to be awesome. So that's, uh, that's about it, guys. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.